morning. We will call the July 19th special call city council meeting to order. You would please stand and uh, have Councilman Stovall lead us our invocation and pledge. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us in our great city. I pray that you would be with us as we um, make decisions uh, on behalf of the city today. We pray your blessing, your favor upon our city. We thank you for our employees, the first responders, and everyone who makes this great city uh, what it is, and especially all of our constituents. And uh, we pray you would be with us today, keep everyone safe, and let it be a fruitful, productive day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, next up we have roll call. And Marquise, you see that we have all council members present with council member Holt on her way. Uh, invitation for public comments. We have three signed up. We'll start with Don Sanders. done this before. Good morning. I thank you guys. My name is Don Sanders. Um, I'm a nurse practitioner here in Jackson. I'm a long-term resident of Jackson. I recently came back in 2018 and I am in District 7. I'm very lucky and proud at this point to be represented by Miss Marta Wallace who has very graciously dealt with concerns from members of my neighborhood for several years now. And I came into this meeting with a slightly different understanding of what was going on. So I think, first of all, I just need to say thank you to all of you. I think there is a, um, a budget that's being voted on today, and it has been brought to my attention that that budget is going to include monies to improve road conditions in my neighborhood. My neighborhood has had severe degradation of the road system. It is greatly affecting my safety, my children's safety, our neighbors safety there are children 16 years old driving and these have just been tremendous times in the last couple of years you guys have had multiple calls from us for multiple different issues that have to do with our roads since that is being voted on this morning and i'm confident that it'll be passed it seems as though there's going to be enough money to cover those road improvements so i want to thank you for setting that aside I would like to plead with you to make Country Land Estates the top of your list when those funds become available and those improvements with our new equipment begin being put into practice. I thank you all for your time. All right, thank, you. thank you. All right, next up, we have Nick Donald, Jay Stample, y'all come together, right? Okay. Today, Nick Donald, Jackson Police Department, and this is uh, Jay Stanfield with Sergeant uh, Police Department. I want to say a few words. Let's start. Uh, Nick brought this to our attention that uh, we just want to highlight. I've been here in the city going on 24 years. Uh, grew up in Madison County, uh, lived on Montclair Street. Matter of fact, Mayor Conger, your grandmother was my third grade teacher. Uh, Don't have to drink. Lifelong resident in Madison County outside of my time in college and brief stint in the Marine Corps. When I started at JPD, uh, JPD was a magnet uh, for individuals in West Tennessee. We drew officers from other departments, but didn't like us because we paid so well. Uh, we're starting to suffer the effects of neglecting that over the last 16 years, which is certainly not something this administration created. It goes back further than that. but. We're reaching a critical mass at the police department. Uh, today, we work with less people than I started with in 2001. Investigations, uh, Nick, are down, uh, at least officers dedicated to investigations are nearly down half right. of what they were in 2001. Uh, patrol officers are still working the same amount of officers uh, when we reach minimum staffing that we had in 2001. We've got to do something. I think y'all are in the right step. 
these salaries will start that that increase. And Nick may have some. Well, just retaining officers, and I think the pay increase will help retain officers. We're losing officers every week, it seems like, from one year to 15 years, and we want to retain those officers and give them a good department to come to and stay with, you know, for the duration of their career. And uh, these raises will be a step in that direction, and uh, we want to make that happen. Uh, this is a, a safety concern for the community, and uh, less officers on the street mean, you know, more crime that can occur, and, you know, our ability to uh, solve it, you know, decreases when we don't have the uh, correct amount of officers on the street to maintain, you know. Um, I think, you know, officers want days off and they can't get them sometimes because of the manpower issues. So we definitely need this. It's a critical, uh, at a critical state, like uh, Sergeant Stample said. So we ask that you vote yes, you know, because I think the, our main concern is, is keeping officers and making the city safe as we continue to grow. And uh, a lot of new developments are coming and we need the officers to want to come here. And, and right now they can go to smaller departments and make about the same amount of pay and do less work, less danger, take home car, all these things. And we have to consider that for our officers if we want to maintain them and keep them here. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, you should see the council member Holt has arrived. <laughs> Thanks for the notice. <laughs> I'm sure I'm so sneaky getting in here that nobody's like, sorry guys. <clears throat> Item five is second reading, proposed bu FY25 <coughs> budget ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to point out one thing real quick. Those of you who woke up and checked the news this morning, you saw the Microsoft outages affecting IT across the world. And uh, checked an email this morning, Brian Taylor, head of our IT department, sent it out at 4.30 in the morning after having been on the clock for several hours through the middle of the night. Uh, that out outage affected the city of Jackson and affected uh, communications for 911 and emergency services. So I want to say a tremendous thank you to our IT department for getting up in the middle of the night, working hard to make sure that our emergency services, who are already working in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. would be minimally impacted and affected. So let's give IT a round of applause. For their <laughs> And these are the men and women that this budget is seeking to take care of. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yep. May I? Good morning, everyone. Last week, my husband and I witnessed a terrible crash, and a wonderful woman was thankfully okay, and I was able to talk as I dialed 911. The lady that answered the dispatch call was calm, professional, and very efficient. Over the next few minutes, I saw paramedics, police officers, firemen, even ones that were off duty, rush there and say, where do I go? What do you need? Since then, I have not been able to get that scene out of my mind. Every day, our police officers, dispatch, and firefighters answer the call no matter who, where, what, and without hesitation. The last five years, I have asked the police chiefs and the fire chiefs how we can retain excellent people and support them in their efforts to work for a safer Jackson. Every time I see our city employees working around the city, in this building, everywhere, I always wonder, gosh, do they feel appreciated or at least heard? Mayor Conger has committed to $7.4 million for our roads. Yes, I want more, and he knows that, and I will continue to fight for a better infrastructure. But because of this commitment, I will vote yes today for our budget, and I hope everyone here can find some common ground. We all need to find some common ground, and let's move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilmember Wallace. Excuse me, Mayor. Yeah. I would just like to first, I've been on city council going on 20 years, and this is almost embarrassing that what we're going through and putting our employees through uh, <clears throat> to show their salary. I don't think anybody work for any other company would want to be, they salary to be shown and shared with anybody throughout the city or anywhere else. Our employees work real hard 
and they deserve a raise. Uh, they've been overlooked for several years. We've did our best to maintain our officers, basically all our police and all the uh, fire department and other departments have been underpaid for years. Uh, we did a study and we were shown that we was not uh, up like we should in other cities and uh, people are leaving daily, going to other jobs. I, I just wish that we could take the politics out of this and do what's right. And once again, to our employees, we are sorry that y'all have been brought into this political mess, and that's all it is all about. You know, we're not going to have a perfect budget, never going to have a perfect budget. I mean, but I could continue to say we can't keep on kicking the can down the road <coughs> when we're going to do something about our budget. I mean, as far as we don't want to do a tax rate, but look across the country, look across the cities and other areas, we're going to have to do something. Uh, but um, employers, we are sorry that y'all brought into this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dunn. Mayor, I'd like to call for a vote if we could. You got to have a motion first. Okay. Now make a motion. I'm second. Afraid. Motion second. Now we now we're going to discussion. Second. Oh, I'm mean, thrilled to hear about this seven million for roads. Where did it come from? The councilman, the council voted on a resolution to issue to look into debt issue. That's what it's coming. From. So it's coming from borrowing money. So that, I need to re-explain that to what a debt issue is. I just want to make sure that everybody heard that. Okay. So so with the budget itself, the operating, the general fund budget did not change. It's just to said separately, we're going to borrow money because we don't have the money we want or need. Now, it's logical that we've got to pay that money back. And if we don't have any money now, or we've got to raise taxes to get that money. Just a hypothetical mm -hmm. question. Uh, this budget has been so challenging to try to learn what's going on and try to make sure it's fair. Uh, we're looking at a 20% increase in two years in overall budget, 9% this year. Pay increase is somewhere around 14%. And I want to say I agree with what y'all said, police. I have made this statement several times. If you're an accountant in Chester County and you're an accountant in Jackson, job's about the same. If you're a patrolman in Chester County or a patrolman in Jackson, they're not even the same job. So two years ago, there was a salary increase, which I have passed out to all the uh, councilmen, and, and Bobby has it, to address the problems, uh, if they were. And amazingly, it found out that we were, we're uh, in a second, thing. Yeah, yes. we were in pretty good shape in most cases. But all we have done in the last two years is, you know, not all we've done, but what we've done is pull the fire and police out separately and not had them use the salary schedule. And by that, for example, this year, it's proposed a four a step increase, which is 10% plus a cost of living, most likely, uh, for the fire and police. And, and so that no one, I think everybody has agreed, that needs to stay. And, and also, we're with you, we're with you. But now, as we look at it, uh, if you'll take the, the survey, the first sheet here, please. Okay, <coughs> this is where I got my numbers. Uh, it was a survey done, and I'm, I think it was implemented about July the 5th, <coughs> 2022. There we go. I won't read it all, but I, I think I read this last time. Bartlett, Clarksville, Cleveland, Collierville, Dave, Cater, Alabama, Lakeland, Kingston, Johnson City, Hendersonville, <coughs> Gallington, Madison County, Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Spring Hill, Tipton County, and general businesses and industrial data. All that is where the study came from. So if you, if you would, Flip to the second page, please, Bobby. And this showed the implementation schedule. And I won't bore you with all of it, but the bottom line, the total implementation is 1.722. That's, you can't read it, but it's the bottom total there. If you could point that, Bobby, to 1.7 million. That was the total implementation schedule. After that, the yearly cost should be that number less step 1A. That was an interim, interim step in there. So if you take that out, if you put the other uh, uh, overhead over now, please. And just review what we said to start with. First 12 months cost is $1.7 million. The yearly estimate is 1.4. Where did that come from? Take the 1.7 and subtract out the one-time increase. Then if you go down and you take the fire department out, which is 399,000, 339,000, take the police out, which is four, a total of 
eight, eight, eight thousand. So you take that away from me, 1.4, and it, it says your net yearly cost should be somewhere around $587. We budgeted $2.4 million. I just need to someone to explain to me, and I hope my figures are wrong, of why we have such a deficit in this. And it's, I just gave Bobby this this morning, so he hadn't had a chance to look at it. Does, any, does anybody know why the deficit is that big? Or did I just look wrong in my calculations? Well, <clears throat> Councilman Lawrence, in your numbers, as I understand them, and these are your numbers, and I did just see them for the first time about yeah. five minutes ago. Right. <clears throat> you seem to be addressing the cost of um, the um, compensation plan in its just, just that component of salaries. Um, it's um, um, the, the salary line that you and the media and the public uh, has seen on the expense report from the budget ordinance um, is impacted by things other than just the compensation plan that you are referring to here. Uh, what drives salaries are numbers of people, uh, how many hours they work, whether they be full-time or part-time, uh, <clears throat> overtime hours. There's other types of salary compensation beyond this particular component of compensation plan. For instance, there are um, other uh, training and retention incentives in the budget, particularly in, in, in the area of public safety. Um, uh, there's education incentives. Uh, there, well, there's longevity pay, for instance, for employees uh, all across the city, once, you know, that, that's built into the salaries. But in, in addition, particularly in public safety, uh, this budget includes, uh, there's certain compensation for uh, training that public safety officers receive. There's certain compensation for service that the police department, police officers, or firefighters serve, I guess, outside the traditional role of a patrol officer or a firefighter. You know, a firefighter may serve on a hazmat team or may have a, 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 um, an EMT or even a paramedic <coughs> certification. They're, they're compensated for that. A police officer may serve, um, you know, on the SWAT team or a police officer may serve in the aviation unit or the canine unit. So, I guess what I'm describing, some of the numbers that have been quoted about uh, salaries are driven by factors beyond just this uh, compensation. Two points. <clears throat> First of all, all those, <coughs> yes, are good and, and are, but they're not included in this. This is a salary to yep. salaries, and I kept it that way so it wouldn't muddy the water. Uh, some of the presentations in the public media have been uh, salaries in total based on the numbers that they're seeing on the expense report. And uh, th those include um, numbers beyond just the, the compensation plan. Well, th these don't. I'll we'll make sure on that. And also, you, you comment about police. I want to reiterate, yes, we agree with you. Uh, and all those things are covered. But my point is, am, am I missing something on this? For a sal salary plan to be good, it's got to be fair to all employees. We can't pick and choose. And my question is, who proposed these salaries that are in the budgets now? Who, who's the one that proposed them? We work with our department heads, and some of these have been through reorganization. The fact that I can think of one one of our larger departments that had no structure whatsoever. There was a superintendent, a department head, and then everyone else was on the same level, but they all had different crews that they had to work together. And so once we reorganized, the new department head created an, an organizational structure that had uh, crew supervisors and shift leaders as well. And so we also look at uh, this as in addition to that we have a $5.6 billion facility going 40 miles down the road, and we are competing for people, which I've said numerous times to this <coughs> council, to the public. And so our department heads looking at the specialized positions of what they have as, their, as far as their certifications have proposed various step increases. It follows the matrix that has been presented, uh, step increases for those certifications and for the hierarchy in the, in, within the department. Okay, so, and so these were proposed by a group, and then you did put them against the salary plan to see that they did match that, up? That group is our department heads that work with our people who provide the service every day. That group, is that who that is? Yes. Okay, but they didn't put their own salary in, did they? No. Okay, who did that? 
Give me their own salary. Well, on the line, there's a, some there's salary increases. Yep. Who put those in? Our, as has been discussed several times, our, depar our, our budget is a bottom-up budget. Our department okay. has worked closely with their departments to propose the salary step increases based on their certifications, based on the hierarchy and the structure, based on the fact that we need to retain people, based on the fact that we have good people that work and provide service every day, and I stand by what they propose, and I approve what they propose, because by God, we need them. Amen. Uh, let me go back then. So after this, I, I have the floor. Uh, after this was proposed, did someone check it against the salary plan to make sure it matched the salary plan? That's yes, my question. Yes, it goes against okay. the matrix, goes on steps, not, not just I, that, the That's exactly right. And, and according to the implementation, unless it's extraordinary circumstances such as a promotion or stuff like that, it's one step, which is 2.5% plus a possible cost of living. And this one in the study was recommended that year to be 3% or a total of 5.5%. So you're telling me that when these propose, someone took it back to the salary plan and they are in line with the salary plan. Yes. If that, that, that will answer a bunch of questions. But now, how do we end up with this then? It is not on one step. So if you look at certifications, look at hierarchy of what the department level is, and as far as supervisors and crew leaders, they move. Up, they may move up more than one step if someone's getting a promotion or someone has a different certification. Because I tell you right now, an HVAC guy for the city of Jackson go to the private sector and make double. Absolutely. And so we have to make sure we keep people, and we have to make sure that we keep them. And you asked me a question. I have the floor right now. Had to make sure that we keep people, had to make sure that we had the best people that we had to provide service to the 68,330 people that live here and the additional 51% that come to work here from outside of Madison County. So our people are serving not just the people that live here, but the additional 100,000 people that come in every single day. I have no problem. And I'm, 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 I don't Can know we that we're going to call for questions. Can we stop? Call for questions. I mean, it's that takes precedent. Call for questions. Council, please vote. Eight yes and two. Seven. And yeah, two no. Seven and two, I'm sorry. Seven and two, okay. All right, call for question. Now we have the votes on proposed FY25 budget. Council, please vote. Six and three no. Six and three no. Okay. Seven and two. And the budget passes. No further business coming forward to the council. Meeting is adjourned. I'm gonna see.